what I'm hoping to do today in the short time we'll be pleased to know uh, that I'll be speaking to you <coughs> is to outline the rationale for establishing the consultant-led service to define exactly what uh, I mean by consultant-led service uh, and it'll be based on the model of the Royal Melbourne Hospital uh, this is a, called the Emergency General Surgical Service or uh, catchphrase of eggs uh, and at the end to uh, completely win you over with data showing the effectiveness of having such a service. Now the rationale why uh, we would be proposed that uh, we would need a consultant led service uh, the workload that I think all, all major hospitals uh, will attest to uh, has increased uh, enormously over the last few years and it becomes impractical to effectively manage uh, this large emergency load based on our traditional sub-specialty general surgical units. Also, uh, there's uh, data from the Victorian Audit of Surgical Mortality, uh, as has already been alluded to, which demonstrates the vulnerability of the acute uh, admissions, general surgical admissions, 85% uh, of the deaths in general surgery occur within this group. In analysing the data further, uh, a number of management issues uh, have been uh, highlighted, all of which it could be safely assumed would be improved by the early presence of a senior surgical opinion. I'll now spend a little moment speaking about the service that was established at the Royal Melbourne Hospital. I think most people will uh, have some familiarity with the hospital. It is a large uh, teaching hospital. It, does also, it is also a level one major trauma service. Uh, a little under a thousand major traumas and about two thousand other less major traumas are admitted uh, annually. Uh, there are the typical general surgical departments uh, within uh, the, the hospital. 50% of the general surgical workload is emergency surgery and you could well understand that it was difficult to manage that in a fragmented fashion uh, amongst the subspecialty units. The Emergency General Surgical Service was established in 2011 and this is a consultant-led uh, model of care, uh, the aims of which were clearly to try and improve patient care but also to make a, a smoother running of the whole uh, process. Um, it was hoped that it would facilitate the safe and efficient management of patients from the ED, would maximise operating within normal operating hours by having the readily availability of a surgeon in-house. Clearly these would all would lead to a reduction in the length of stay uh, and we had hoped that by a better and more efficient uh, management of the, general, of the emergency patients uh, it would facilitate the elective surgery which was often hindered by the backlog of emergency cases. Also, one which is harder to measure is whether or not there would be some um, reduction in the use of diagnostic tests, some of, some of which are not necessarily appropriate, uh, but when you're considering a more junior uh, registrar who has to ring up his boss in the middle of the night, they'd like to well justify uh, their diagnosis and would perhaps tend uh, to be inclined to uh, order any investigations that may help. So it was thought that if there was a more senior and experienced uh, specialist opinion then a uh, number of CT scans for example may be found uh, not necessary. The structure of the egg service it, it consists of a, a week about uh, roster. There are 13 of the I think 18 consultant surgeons uh, participate in this roster. There's, as I said, they won't call for a whole week, so this is quite a, an undertaking, uh, but uh, you can see you'd only be on call uh, four weeks in a year. It runs from Friday to Friday. Uh, the consultant is in-house from seven in the morning until six at night. Uh, they're on call four nights a week, two of which they're on as the first on call, uh, and another two is there's backup from the fellows. Um, and the other three nights of the week are covered by uh, other consultants. The daily duties uh, that the uh, consultant uh, who's uh, in-house uh, includes being um, actively participating in the handover, performing daily ward rounds of this large cohort of emergency patients, operating on those uh, emergency patients if uh, theatre time is available in hours. Uh, they're there to be, uh, provide patient assessment 
front line patient assessment in the emergency department and they're also always there for the um, uh, emergency calls for trauma. They, the consultant on remains uh, responsible for the cohort of the existing uh, and new uh, gen acute general surgical patients and they also look after the trauma patients on a day-to-day -day basis, the new patients that come through. The types of uh, diagnoses are, one would predict and the majority of uh, patients who present with acute general surgical problems will be managed by the egg service. They will, however, filter out some cases which will then be referred to the subspecialty units, those who have more complicated and cases that are going to require a prolonged care. The uh, service is backed up by outpatient clinics, there are two per week which are run by the registrar and they're reserved for routine post-operative patients. Complex patients uh, would, be, would have their follow-up continued by the surgeon who'd been on for the week in their uh, own subspecialty clinic or they would be referred to, to the other or another appropriate subspecialty service. I think germane to the whole process working effectively and to ensure that patients don't slip through the web and, and become orphans in the system um, uh, relies on a, a robust handover. Uh, this is a face-to-face -face, uh, activity, consultant to consultant, and occurs. the primary one occurs at 8am on the Friday morning when there's a changing of the guard. Uh, the night registrar um, also hands over to the on-call consultant and the eggs team daily at 7.30 in the morning and then there are further registrar to registrar uh, handovers at shift change. To perform these handovers obviously you need uh, ready access to reliable data and this is retrieved through the Department of General Surgery database. Uh, this database uh, acts not only to produce the handover document, patient lists, uh, can provide reports on individual unit activities or admissions, operations and complications. The data is reviewed weekly uh, at the General Surgical Audit and it's updated twice daily uh, by the uh, members of the EGS team. These are just a few sort of uh, pictures of uh, the, what the handover uh, or the database produces. It's uh, populated from the patient information system for the hospital, so it is reasonably accurate. Uh, clinical data is subsequently added by the treating team. And this is just an example of the handover document. This is a web-based system, so anyone who's got the password uh, can access the database from anywhere within the, the hospital and provides the sort of information that you would need based on not only what the injuries or illnesses are, but also what the results of investigations have been uh, and what tasks and so on need to be um, carried forward. Uh, from this, uh, and, and, and look, the, for each individual patient, um, uh, clinical data will be, will be entered and all complications are also um, recorded. Uh, they're classified uh, according to the College of Surgeons' uh, recommendations. Uh, they're either no issues, consideration, concern or a central event uh, and graded using the Clavian system so that there'll be some uniformity in the way in which uh, we analyse the data and we'll be able to use it as comparisons with other institutions. Is this all worth the effort? Um, it, it clearly costs quite a bit of money to pay to have uh, surgeons uh, in-house uh, during the uh, working week. Um, and however, I think that the information to follow will, will I think, justify the, the activity that's been uh, underlined. And again, as I say, this is Rose Shakirian's data. She uh, did a study as part of her MD, uh, re reviewing the year before and the year after the introduction of the eggs um, service. You can see there's been quite a degree as the post-introduction. Uh, You'll see there's been quite a, a dramatic increase in, in the number of admissions. Uh, I think this is partly related to the uh, national emergency access uh, targets that have been imposed on us so that uh, a number of people who once may have languished for quite some time in the emergency department, of course, are all now there's a pressure that they've all admitted and worked uh, on in-house. In 
but uh, that's the workload. If you look at the, it's quite a busy week for them. The, the bottom column there shows that they may be, the average is 87 new uh, patients will come in the week uh, under the care of the consultant surgeon. So quite a, quite a bit to do and as I say, stresses the importance of uh, having a robust handover tool so patients don't get lost uh, in the system. The admission diagnoses are as one would, would expect. Uh, there's a whole host and the others consist of a mysterious bunch that Rose will fill you in on later if you wish to um, ask her. But it's uh, the standard um, sorts of uh, acute admissions. You will see there are a number there that um, perhaps once uh, may not have quite got a Guernsey in the hospital, those who, whose diagnosis was uh, simply abdominal pain, upper abdominal pain, lower abdominal pain, they may once have spent quite some time being uh, worked out and some of which perhaps could have gone home in the although it may have taken a, a, a lengthy um, ED admission. <coughs> These sorts of operations are performed. Um, appendicectomy uh, is uh, the, the um, most frequent operation. A large number of gallbladder operations are performed and laparotomy uh, comes up uh, with the top three, um, but the others are self-explanatory. Has it been of any benefit? Uh, in fact, does it pay for itself? Uh, well, we would think that this data would perhaps uh, reinforce that yes, it, it does. There's been a very pleasing reduction in the average length of stay for the uh, emergency patients. And extrapolating those figures forward, you'll see that it is um, estimated that 5.4 beds are saved on a daily basis uh, looking after these patients in this new system. So I think that more than perhaps pays for the uh, the salaries and wages that, that this uh, necessitates. Uh, are, are the patients being more quickly pushed through the system? <coughs> and you'll see that uh, from these ED figures that a much higher proportion of patients are being admitted within the eight hour target. Just disregard the last one, it's not so good. Um, but the <laughs> others are more, more dramatic. Just watch my lips when we go those ones. Uh, much more dramatic than, than perhaps the early ones. But nevertheless, it, it has been, you can see, a 20% improvement uh, in the average eight hour performance. Unfortunately, I don't have comparative data that other that preceded uh, this, but this is a pie chart showing the time of the operation. And since the introduction of the system, 50% of the emergency general surgical operations are conducted within normal working hours, which is, I think, a striking difference where traditionally you know, appendicectomies wouldn't have started till after all the elective lists. Now, and this I would have to stress is not because a, a specific uh, emergency theatre has been allocated to general surgery, it's just that with the greater availability of people, uh, that they've been able to find times in the theatre template where additional cases can be slotted in. Um, uh, and producing these, I think, which for the surgeons is a much more pleasant uh, lifestyle if they're doing most of the operations in hours. Only 9% of the emergency operations, general surgical emergency operations, start <coughs> after midnight. So I think a anecdotally a striking difference to what perhaps uh, we had once uh, experienced. Following on from Richard's comments about the advisability in most cases of doing appendicectomies uh, at the time of admission, there has been a uh, striking uh, improvement prior to the introduction of the service. Less than half or just a little over half had their cholecystectomy on their primary uh, admission, but that's gone up to 77%. This has had a, a big difference in the uh, waiting list and these patients which would normally have gone through the system slowly going to our patients and been put on the waiting list are in fact being dealt with far more expeditiously. Uh, I mean, see the uh, gallbladder numbers uh, are quite uh, high. The length of stay um, it has been changed and this is data uh, published from the uh, Department of Health looking at laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Um, they're sort of good and bad in this. The bad is that we were the worst performers out of all those hospitals prior to the establishment of the, of the eggs. The Royal Melbourne is the purple one at the top. But there's really quite a dramatic uh, reduction in the length of stay for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Um, I would have to uh, compliment the Western Hospital on an extraordinary performance. Uh, and paradoxically there, the length of stay increased a little bit, but um, they're still way ahead of the field. And I think the, the last slide, and unfortunately I don't have a lot of uh, um, detail on this data and certainly we don't have confidence levels and uh, to um, 
il illustrate the uh, impact, but it would seem there has been a significant reduction in complications in the general surgical patients. Uh, during the time from February 2011 to January 2013, there's been a 62% increase in the number of admissions and 41% increase in the number of emergency operations and an overall 46% reduction in the number of complications. And if you look at the more serious complications, the Clavian 4, which is patients uh, with life, potentially life-threatening complications requiring uh, ICU admission, there was a 50% reduction and similarly for those patients whose complications subsequently led to the death of the patient there was a 50% reduction. So really overall I think a, a striking um, improvement in the management of uh, patients uh, the general surgical admissions which um, I think is in part due to the introduction of the emergency general surgical service. Thank you.